Today we're going to look at the small red rhinoceros cage. Um, it's an advanced cage kit for the Sony Alpha, um, R5, A74 and the S3 as well. So it comes packaged in a normal box. Pretty typical of small rig stuff these days. And inside we have the cage itself with the side handle and the top handle, HDMI, um, clamp and an allen key. So we'll get everything out of the box. It's quite well packaged though, it's nice and sturdy. Side handle, top handle, So looking at the cage itself, it's really it's a really nice design. Um, it's got these anodized screws in it, which give a good effect. One mounting point for the base of the camera. It also comes with a magnetic key, um, and that is an Allen key on the bottom as well. And that just sticks in there like that. Side handle. It's really lightweight. I think all of this is made of carbon fiber or a lot of it is anyway. And then you've got a little leather grip here as well, which is really nice to hold on to. You can set this up for right or left, depending on how you feel. However, the cage itself only has a NATO rail on the left hand side. You can get NATO rails from small rig that will attach to this side as well, if you prefer. The top handle. This, again, seems to be carbon fibre of some sort with a rubber grip on it. Um, it's got a triangular screw with our um, area mounting points here, locators. Um, and a hot shoe on the front here with a lock. Again, it has got a mounting point with area locators on the front, the back, and another hot shoe on the back as well. So it's feels really nice, it's really lightweight. Um, let's get it attached to the camera. We're going to attach it to the A74 because that's what I have. So first of all the cage slides over, fits really nicely straight off the bat. And then we can use the screw mount uh, on the bottom here to get it attached to the bottom first of all. So that's now attached there. On the side here, you'll see that you have a mount that goes into your uh, strap clamp there, and the screw for that is located here. So you unscrew it from the side, like this. It's quite nice because it has a place for all the screws so that if you ever do take it off, you can put them back and not lose any. And then that just goes through there and screws in. I've already had this attached before I created this video just to make sure everything was working right. So that goes in there like that, nice and tight. And one that I've seen people miss quite a lot is this one here. Uh, this is a little pin, so you take that off here. If it wants to come off, there we go. And then the pin itself comes out and you have a pin. And that then goes in to the cage just next to the battery door like that and that secures it on this side so it has got three points of contact three points of secureness uh, on this cage here and then just screw that in and it gives it a really good tight fit it doesn't wobble at all there is a bit of play up here but you know the tiniest, tiniest amount, I don't think you'd even ever notice it if you weren't really, really looking for it. So then the needle handle. So I actually have this set up a little bit higher um, for, my, for me because I have a base plate that I put a battery onto as well. So when the battery's on that base plate, I have it sitting about there. But just for today, we'll just screw this on to here like that. And that just goes on, quick release. Thumb screw here and there. And as you can see on the top handle, you have mounting points as well and battery locator pins with a hot shoe mount too. Bloody dog hair gets everywhere. 
So that's how it looks with the side handle and the cage. And then if we mount the top handle, now this will mount this way or this way depending on your setup. Um, ideally what you want is you want it to be balanced in the middle so that when you hold it in the middle here, your camera doesn't tilt forward or backwards. So for this setup, I'll pop a lens on. And this is the 20 to, 24 to 70 G Master lens. And we'll pop that on and I'll show you what I mean by the balancing. So we've popped that on, I'll show you what we mean by the balancing. So screw this in. And what you'll notice is if I put it this way, the camera slightly tilts forward. It's not too bad if you hold it right at the front there, but when you're holding it like this, you do feel a slight strain on your wrist because of the weight of the front here for the lens. So for this sort of setup, I would recommend turning this handle around and loading it this way. And what I find is that I find that that balances it a bit better. So when you pick it up, you don't feel the strain because the weight's right under your hand rather than being pulled by your wrist. So you don't feel the same kind of strain. Obviously, if you're using the side handle, um, you can mitigate some of that as well. So that is the setup and the looks of the rhinoceros cage. Now, who does this suit? I think if you're solely a filmmaker or a videographer, you might prefer the, the older cage, but myself, I'm hybrid, so I shoot photos and video. So this is actually really good, just on its own as a cage as well. So if I just unscrew this, it feels very ergonomic in the hand. Um, it's really comfortable. So you can actually keep this cage on all the time and use it for photos too. And you see, it doesn't actually create that much difference. Um, that little extra lip there does give your pinky somewhere to sit. I know quite a lot of photographers like to get the small rig base plate that sits down about a centimetre and that gives your pinky somewhere. But for me, my hands, they fit on there okay. And it's a good setup. You can access all your dials, no problem. And you still have your extra uh, cold shoe mount along with your hot shoe on the top available. Would I recommend this? I think absolutely I would. It's sleek, it's nice, it's really easy to put on. It's really easy to take off. It only takes maybe a minute, minute and a half. Um, and I'd absolutely recommend it. Feel free to ask any questions uh, and I'll answer them for you as well if I can.